A Paradise Called Texas by Janice Jordan Shuffleman. Chapter 1 A Stranger in the Village, Fürstedt, Germany, May 1845. School was dismissed at noon, and Mina ran home as fast as she could along the winding village street. She did not wait for her cousins because she had to tell Papa about the stranger. Papa, Papa, Mina burst through the door into the big room. There's a stranger in the village. Everyone in the room stopped still as Mina came in. Papa, Uncle Christian, and Opa were sitting at the oaken table in the center of the room. Mama and Aunt Sophie were bringing steaming bowls. Mina stood there looking at them, breathless from her run her heart pounding within her chest. Now, Mina, come and sit here. Papa patted a place on the bench next to him. Mina sat lightly beside him and looked into his broad face that was neatly framed with a fringe beard. Papa's sad eyes always calmed her. Now tell me, Mina, about this stranger. Well, he came on a horse and put up a notice on the schoolhouse about going to Texas to live. It says there is going to be a new Germany in Texas, a paradise. Mina could sit no longer. She jumped up, flicking her right braid over her shoulder. Facing Papa, she continued, he is going to tell about Texas this very afternoon. Let us go and hear him, please, Papa. Yeah, Ernest, you should go with a child. Opa leaned back in his chair at the head of the table. His deep-set eyes seemed to sparkle from under the thick eyebrows as he turned to look at Mina. She knew he was smiling even though his mouth was hidden in his grizzled beard and mustache. But there is much work to do in the field this afternoon, Papa said to his father. Well, Christian and I can work alone for today, Opa answered. Uncle Christian looked sullen as always. Mama and Aunt Sophie had sat down at last when the other children came in. Christine and Hans. Christine smiled sweetly. Sometimes Mina wished she could be as serene and beautiful as Christine, but it was not possible. Feelings came bubbling up inside her and she could not deny them. Mama always told her she must act more like a lady. Do you not have school this afternoon, Mina? Mama asked. No, Herr Bremer has let the school out for the rest of the day so that we can learn about Texas. Papa laughed. Very well, my Kleine. Mina, we shall go. Papa had called her Kleina Mina ever since she could remember. Her real name was Joanne Ernestine Wilhelmine Jordan, but she was called Mina for short. The two families sat down to dinner. Mina bowed her head and listened as Opa said the grace in his deep, resounding voice, filling the room up into the dark rafters. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let the food you gave be blessed. Mina loved Opa's big house. It had been built years ago by his father, but someday Opa would give the farmstead to his firstborn son, Christian. Then, where would they go? One thing was certain. They could not continue to live in this house. Papa and Uncle Christian had diff disagreements and were not fond of each other. No, without Opa here... It could not be their home. Mina stood with Papa and Mama and the crowd of villagers gathered around the front door of the schoolhouse, waiting for the stranger to begin. Farmer folk of Versted, I come here to tell you of a wonderful opportunity, a chance to start a new life, farming your own land in that paradise of North America called Texas. The stranger moved up to the top step and stood in front of the schoolhouse door. My name is Johann Schneider, and I've been sent to your village by the Adelsfern, a group of noblemen who have purchased land in Texas for the benefit of German peasants. He unrolled a map of North America and asked a bystander to hold one side. Now, here we have the Republic of Texas, a vast land, rich and fertile, just waiting for German farmers to plant their seeds and reap their harvest. Herr Schneider rolled up the map and continued. Here in Germany, there is little land left and there are more and more people. But in Texas, there is no limit to the land. 
each family that signs a contract with the Edelsveren will receive 320 acres of rich farmland. There were sounds of astonishment from the crowd. 320 acres? That is more than our whole village and farmlands put together. Someone in the crowd held up his hand. How much does it cost? A good question, another said. Well, my friends, that is the best part of all, Herr Schneider answered. For only 600 gulden, the Adelsveren will provide the land and transportation to Texas on a fine sh sailing ship. At the Texas port, wagons will be waiting to take you to the new colony where houses and schools will be built. And the Adelsveren also promises to provide food and supplies until a first harvest can be made. Herr Schneider held out his arms to the crowd, all this for a mere 600 gulden. People began talking amongst themselves, but Herr Schneider continued, Do not think that you would be leaving all friends and neighbors behind, for many families from villages only a few kilometers away have signed contracts to go. The Kaufmanns from Armstead, the Ingalls from Westfeld, it will be like a new Germany in Texas. Herr Schneider put on his hat. I will return in a week with contracts for any to sign who may decide to go. The brig, Magaretha, will depart Bremerhaven at the end of the summer, so there is plenty of time for preparations. He stepped down and made his way to his horse. All that land, thought Mina. Why, one would be as wealthy as a nobleman. Mina longed to see the world outside their little village. She had only been to Botzelstedford, two kilometers away, where rich people came to take the cure. But she longed to see great cities, the boundless ocean, and most of all, America. As they started walking home, Mina skipped. She felt excitement coursing through her body. Papa turned to Mama. Perhaps we should think about going to Texas, Minchin. It sounds very good. He looked at her, waiting. But Ernst, we cannot leave Verstead. It is our home. Germany is our fatherland. Mama smoothed back her blonde hair that was coiled in a braid in the back of her head. I could not leave our home to go to a wilderness. Mention, we will never have a home and farm of our own here, and even my days as a linen weaver are over. The new machines weave a hundred times faster and cheaper than I can. Who will come to me for linen anymore? Mama was silent for a moment, looking down at the street as they walked home to Op Opa's house. But you are dreaming, Ernst. We have no money to go to Texas.